Hey y'all, it's Michael. And so what I thought for my next video, what I would do is I wanted to integrate the way that I review um, short story collections into the way that like I would haul books and whatnot. I feel as though like that's a really good way to not only like haul the books and keep me accountable myself to actually read the books and talk about the books that I that I am purchasing because right now I'm finding out that I have a lot of books um, in my own personal collection that I need uh, to get to. So recently I went to a bookstore in Atlanta and I talked about this on my um, bookstagram uh, account so if, make sure you follow me on there. I post like when random stuff basically in my life instead of just like book reviews and whatnot or like whenever I go to bookstores and um, I do like little quick hauls every once in a while whenever I do purchase books so follow me on there and that way you can get like more of a real time because these are obviously like edited and whatnot so I went to this bookstore in Atlanta called um, Four Keeps Books it recently just opened in 2018 at the tail end of it i wanted to check it out because i saw um i saw a tweet about it and then i was like oh that's actually close by where i was like going um i believe it was in february in march somewhere around there and so i was like oh i'll check it out and so i bought three books from there and that's what i'm going to show you let me talk about the bookstore for a few minutes um i thought it was so cool it's downtown i believe yeah i don't know how um atlanta classifies their uh their city but it's downtown the thing though is i think next time i'm just wherever the hotel was that i was staying at i think i'm just gonna walk from there instead of actually driving i was driving because i was like heading home so I, I thought i would check out the bookstore and i say this because the parking was a little bit i was like what because the parking thing where you put in your like license plate to park and whatnot um it wasn't working <laughs> and i had to download the app and it was just like so cumbersome and whatnot but i'll read an article um i saw that on the new york times about the bookstore so you can read more about it but it's a used um black owned business bookstore um it only sells used and there's like some rare collectibles in there like you can't buy the book like certain books you can't buy um and i thought the prices were really nice and it was really actually cool to meet the owner of there like she was there her name is Rose I thought she was really nice and really helpful um and it's just like a really cool place you could just tell like it's just a place just to sit down and like actually read and just like hang out for a few um moments I thought it was a really nice book so it, like aesthetically aesthetically too it's aesthetic so I thought that was really cool so all right so these are the books that I purchased the first one is Breath Eyes Memory by Edwin Dandekat um I read her short story collection Crit Crat and I I did like it and so I saw this and I was actually wanting to see what she'll be able to do because I haven't read her other stories um her other novels and so i wanted to see what she'll be able to do like in a long form type of a story the next one that i purchased was harriet tubman conductor of the underground railroad by ann petrie i a few years ago i read um the street by ann petrie which i love love that book and so i saw this and i was like sure why not um i think this is non-fiction though but um if anything it'll be, it looks like a, a great read the last one that i purchased there is the Wedding by Dorothy West and I posted on my Instagram stories about this um, about the three books that I hauled actually a lot of people actually messaged me on The Wedding by Dorothy West like they were like oh my gosh this book is really great you should read it so I think I'm gonna start with that similar to my other reviews um, that I've been doing recently with my first impression usually around the 50 100 page mark but these are pretty short so probably the 50 page and the I might do a halfway depending on how short the book is uh, a halfway point and at the end I'll tell you all what I think about the overall books. I think it's actually gonna be a fun thing. Right, so I'm on page 102, so I thought I would give you, um, like, I guess this would be like the first reaction before I get towards the end. Um, because I, I feel like I'm gonna read this really, really fast, faster than what I'm anticipating. But overall, I y'all, I'm I'm really liking this. Um, This is my first novel. I've, I've never actually read anything by Dorothy West. Um, she is a prominent she is a prominent um, figure of the Harlem Renaissance, and I have heard of her because I did read a biography about Locke, and so I th I was like, ooh, okay, yeah. That, so I thought that was like really cool see reading her works. First off, it is so well written. The writing style is so good, and it is a story that a type of story that I really enjoyed. If you've been watching my channel for quite a while, and it's messy. I love messy stories. <laughs> Like, if you're going to do a family saga, either A, set it up for, like, a big family um, dinner, kind of like maybe Thanksgiving or, um, you know, your Christmas dinner, a birthday gathering, like a party. But the other um, type of gathering that always works is a wedding or a funeral because it always brings mess. And, I mean, hence the name, The Wedding. And this is so basically following a um, wedding between um, one of the... Well, there's a lot of characters, actually. Uh, there's, like, a family tree in here. So um, we're following this wedding 
of um, Shelby who's getting married to me. I'm trying to like keep it in track within my head because yeah, when I tell you there's a lot of characters. I love how um, Wes kind of goes back like retroactively introduces these characters and about their how they how they met each other like how the family tree in the beginning is essentially stacking up and why it stacks up this way I'm really liking that one of the main things that it's also talking about is um colorism how um there's a difference between class and race and I was like oh that is really interesting and like how people tend to get it really mixed up oh, it's just so it's so good I'm really excited to finish how to see how it goes because I'm wondering if it's gonna get really messy because it seems as though Wes is planting right now like she's planting what's about to happen and so we're gonna s I'm gonna see like what the effects of the past because she's basically that's what she's doing is like giving the past and how it's gonna affect what's going to happen during a wedding because it's, it's gonna be so good all right um just ignore the lawnmower I can't do anything about it because it seems like whenever I come out here people always want to mow the lawn so I did finally finish the wedding by Dorothy Wes so let me tell y'all I I freaking love this. I love it so much. We meet the the central family and then we go backwards and we go down. There's actually in the in the beginning, there's an actual um, family tree right here. It's so helpful because I kept finding that I kept going back to it to get the, all the names and whatnot um, straight. What I really loved about this is the characters and the writing and I love, love, love it so much. The story, in my opinion, is a little bit um, cliche in that opinion, in my opinion, because I feel like as though I've countered these types of stories before. And I do, now personally, I do enjoy like messy store, like messy family stories. She explores col colorism within um, the black community. Now, I am not black, so I cannot speak on that. But I am Asian, I'm Filipino, and I can talk about that in Asian culture because it's very, very similar. And I say this because within the hierarchy, similar to um, like the black community, the Asian, the way that Asian colorism works is very, very, very similar. And there is a prejudice and a bias against Asians that are darker skinned. Like you don't see a lot of representation, especially in the main media. Like look at all the K-dramas that you watch, all the, um, all the animes that you watch, even like the main Korean live action films, you don't hardly see any any darker skin Asians um, especially in Filipino media oh my god that is like that is incredibly prevalent you hardly see that at all how people perceive um, colorism because there are some family members essentially they're passing off back then pe um, black people would pass off because they would look white uh, and so they could get they ba basically have more privilege privilege in the society but in in the real life they're actually um, considered black and I thought West explores that topic so well and I just enjoyed the way that she writes this is a perfect example of telling a family history but instead of telling like an author like an average author would do she actually shows it and the way that she writes the, the cadence and the beat I love that and I talk a lot about that on my channel and how I perceive when writers write is that they have this beat this cadence this rhythm to their writing and she really does have that I would love love to read more of her works like I'm kind of wanting to seek out more of, of what she written because it is so beautifully written now the ending to this though comes abruptly fast and when I tell you abruptly fast I mean it like the last five pages like it, the last three pages it was like what in the world like it happens so fast but personally for me I kind of liked it because it without giving too much away it, it's kind of like a catharsis well mm, I don't know it, it, it has this like brevity to it that I was just like oh because everything that leads up to the ending I was like this is how like family structure and family history can really affect then and now because even like me from a huge family right now like my uncle over there's using the wind blower right now I can really relate um, how the Coles family handles everything and just the way that the family tree like she starts on one side and goes down and then the other side and she goes down and I really I really really liked it I I really enjoyed this all right, so the next book that I'm going to read from that um, haul is Harriet Tubman, Conductor of the Underground Railroad by Anne Petrie. Now, I actually got some reading done of this um, in the coffee shop. I'm on page uh, 28 right now. It's chapter 4. Um, I thought this was 
I, well, I'm not sure to classify this as nonfiction or historical fiction because, and I say this because usually when I approach nonfiction, I have a different mindset compared to like fiction in general. Um, so I don't know how to approach it. My first reaction to it, I think this is historical fiction because it doesn't have that vibe that I get with nonfiction, if that makes any sense. Um, so I don't know what to think of it yet. Like, so I finally finished Harriet Tubman, Conductor of the Underground Railroad by Anne Petrie. If anything, I think this is more historical fiction. Halfway through the story, that's how I started approaching it. So I changed my mindset. And I say this is more of a um, historical fiction because it has more of a feel of Harriet Tubman's life compared to like a nonfiction where b something where I would basically know everything about her. So with that in mind, um, I thought this was okay. Um, this is one of those books where it is literally in the middle. Um, it's not bad, like bad, bad, but it's not great either. Um, this is basically the story of Harriet Tubman. <laughs> I don't know. It gives it a the, the title gives it away. Spoiler alert. Now, Anne Petrie, I really do love The Street. That is one of my favorite novels I've ever read. It's one of those books where I am so happy for booktube for introducing me to that book because I genuinely love that story. Um, This, I would classify it way under The Street. Now, the one thing that I really did like about this is it's a really good spark note. <laughs> um, and if anything, I did learn a little bit of um, information about um. Tubman's life but if anything that it was just basically so in the middle. The pacing wise it's very especially towards the end it is incredibly fast um, and I say it's the Sparks Notes version because we don't really get to as a reader um, it's not very it's not detailed it is not detailed at all um, and a lot of the information that is involved with this um, it's your basic surface level history. Um, I felt like as though I knew a lot more than I learned so the learning to already new ratio was now writing wise um you know what petri does a really good job actually like telling the story in beats per beat for me i felt as though petri really tried to paint um harriet tubman as this strong but also vulnerable person you know she is making all of these trips up north and then back down south and i, I really did um appreciate that uh but in the end i would just if anything i would seek out more of a comprehensive um, story about uh, Tubman's life. If anything, um, this was just like more of an introduction spark note, I uh, think. So I don't really have that much to say about it because it was literally um, in the middle. All right, so the next book that I'm going to read from that haul is, and this is the last one, Breath, Eyes, Memory by Edwin Dandekat. So I'm reading this as the start of um, Caribbean Heritage Month. So yay, it falls right into place. Um, I did read um, her short story, uh, Crit Crack, which was actually really cool because like, it's like a connective um, short story collection. Um, and actually, I thought it was really like the magical, real the, the small aspect of like magical realism in that. Um, I really did enjoy. So I am excited to see what she will be really able to do in a long form novel. So yeah, let's go. So I finished Breath, Eyes, Memory by Edwin Dandekat last night, so I thought I would give you guys my final thoughts about it. This was her first novel and um, I can really see it because in comparison to um, Crit Crack, I think that is a better um, indication of her writing because this I was really in the middle about. There are things that are really great, especially in the middle, where it's like moments where this, I was like, wow, this is a writer. Um, but I feel as though structurally wise, the story really falls um because it's split out into four parts the sec the last two parts this is the story about sophie and we follow her basically through her childhood all the way into adulthood and this is a, a story about her it's like a coming of age type of thing um but we get to see what really happens uh throughout her life essentially and that is just the gist this book covers a lot of things about family about love also talks about like being haitian and about the cultural differences especially once she moves um to new york and whatnot you can see me kind of struggling to talk about like what it's about because it is a lot of things um but that's also one of my um gripes about it is that it doesn't for me anyways I didn't feel as though it really owned down on like one particular thing. One of my favorite parts in here is actually in the middle. It is so brilliant on what Dandekat chooses to do with this character and like what happens to this character and just like the symbolism of it um, because there's this thing about the testing. Um, actually I think a lot of cultures do this not even just um, 
in like the Caribbean in general because I actually know of like Asian cultures that actually do this where um, the mom would check to make sure that their daughter is still a virgin and just what the character chooses to do and like the symbolisms and like the layers that Danikat is able to portray during that moment I was like wow like it genuinely shook me I, I was reading this in the coffee shop and I was like oh this is so good so during that moment like I was like oh the momentum is going like the story the beat and like it's it was like I was like oh this is so good and the end really falters for me because like the character development of like Joseph um and like the other characters I don't want to give too much away uh really is all over the place in my opinion there's really no like straight line of who these characters are especially the second like the secondary characters because there's even mentions of them happen to these secondary characters and it just feels a little bit like more of a throwaway during that part th during those parts because it really is like a balancing act there are some spectacular moments but there are also some things that like i really didn't jive with one of the things that i wasn't the biggest fan of this is um some of the writing structure and like the sentence variation mm, i wasn't the biggest fan of because like the sentence structure was just kept repeating 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 and i was like Okay, I did like Sophie. I was rooting for her and there are, like, in her writing anyways, where it just has these moments of, like, something special. Just something like je ne sais quoi about it. I, I, I heard this from somewhere before, where it's like pillow moments, like where you've ever... Yeah, I, I don't know where I've heard this before. Where you lay your head down and there's this moment of, like, almost like... You know what I'm talking about? I, I, I heard this somewhere before. I, I, I don't know why I'm recalling it now, but that's what it feels like. There were moments where it just was like, wow, like moments of just like releasing a breath almost I didn't know I was holding. If you read any of those three books that I mentioned let me know what you think about it. I would love to hear your thoughts. Um, I think I'm gonna do this again because it if anything it made me read those books that I purchased and they weren't just gonna sit around um, in my bookshelf for like a while. Bye!